absence today and all the others. And thank you for joining us for worship online from wherever you are. Welcome to Trinity United Church of Christ on this Memorial Day weekend last Sunday in May. Summer begins. A couple of announcements for you today. And uh, really, I'm just going to refer you to the weekly mailing and the weekly email because that's got some information in it about what's coming up in terms of our regathering on July 4th. And it also has some important dates for you for coming and helping get the church and the grounds ready for our return to regathering and worship. And those uh, dates are a couple of dates during the week. We actually left out a couple, I think, in the announcement, so we'll correct that this coming week. There are a few more weekday dates, and then there are two Saturday dates. So please make a note of those and plan to come and help with uh, however you can. There, there is a long list of what we need to do. We'll get that done, but we need your help to do it. So uh, many of you have said, yes, we'll be here, so thank you already in advance for that. And uh, that's the main thing I think that you need to know today for about our regathering uh, coming up on July the 4th. And any other announcements, please refer to that. Well, one other I will say, remember that you have an opportunity to support uh, David Maxwell as he goes on a, on a mission trip to, or actually a service trip to Rwanda. And uh, you can contribute to that by offering donations to help buy sewing machines for women there so that they can support themselves. And also, you can help by donating t-shirts, uh, very gently used t-shirts of any size. And you can bring those here. Uh, I will make sure we have information in the announcements this week about how to give money if you want to do that. So thank you also for those of you who've already contributed to that. Now we would like you to know, as always, at Trinity, no matter who you are, no matter where you are on life's journey, no matter who you love or how you identify, we welcome you into the full life and ministry of this loving congregation. Welcome to Trinity. So this is the day God has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it as we are called to worship. Spirit. 
join me for our responsive intent. Before the mystery that is God, and in the sacred presence of one another, we gather in faith and celebrate the embrace of God's love. Known and called as Christ's friends, and drawn to the vision of a new way for the world, we gather in faith and celebrate the embrace of God's love. Filled with the spirit of peace and reborn to share the joy of life, we gather in faith and celebrate the embrace of God's love. Amen. I want to note a couple of uh, celebrations today and also some uh, a few concerns that I want to make you aware of before I pray today for our prayer time. And one of those is that we continue to congratulate the class of 2021 graduates. Um, Michaela Ammerman graduated this past week from Air Force Basic Training. And so we applaud her. She also had a birthday this past week, I think the same day or the day before. And today is Maya M's birthday. So we celebrate your birthday, Maya, and hope you have a great day. If you know of others who are graduating, please let us know. We'd like to recognize them over the next few weeks. Um, also, we remember on this Memorial Day weekend, those who died in the military fighting our country's wars we remember also their families who still miss them and who still grieve their, their deaths. We give thanks for their lives. And finally, a couple of updates I need to let you know about. One of those is, uh, I think I said last Sunday that uh, Debbie's sister Margot had died and they had the memorial service for her yesterday uh, down in Jacksonville, Florida. So remember Debbie and the family of Margot, uh, Debbie's other sister, Laura, in your prayers. Also, Trish Wynn's father died this past week, um, Ron Milford. So we remember the family of Ron, and particularly Trish and her family as they grieve his death. He was, he was I uh, can't remember how old he was, but not, not very old. Um, and so please remember them in your prayers. Also, uh, the family of Mike, a friend of Tom's and Ann's up in Maryland who has died uh, after losing the battle to prostate cancer. So we remember him also. Let us pray. For all your goodness, God, we give you thanks for your presence in our lives in mysterious ways, ways that we don't understand, and your presence in our way, in our lives, in ways that bring comfort and peace in times of grief. We give thanks for your presence in our lives in times of joy and celebration, such as birthdays, and graduations, which we continue to celebrate this week. And we give thanks for your presence in our lives through difficult, tragic times, such as those times this past week in San Jose and the Santa Clara Valley Transportation Authority. We also give thanks, God, for your presence in our lives in times of grief. So we pray that you would be with those families who have lost loved ones this week and last week. We pray for Tricia and her family as they grieve her father's dying. And we pray for comfort and peace for them and for the family of Margot and Debbie, for her family as they grieve this very close loss. 
And we pray for the family of Mike and Tom and Anna as they grieve his death and his family as also they grieve his death. Be with us, O oh God, as, as support, as community, as church, family here, as we try to offer prayers of comfort and peace, but also a listening ear and presence for people, even as we are not yet regathered. We pray for connections and, 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 and good ways that bring an acknowledgement that something, someone, has lost something significant in their lives that will never be replaced. We, oh God, are all too aware of how fleeting life can be in these bodies in which we walk around on this planet and for which we give you thanks. We're grateful, oh God, for the way you've created us from the dust of the earth and that to which we do return. We give thanks for our spirits that return to you, their source, for the mystery that you are made known to us in many ways. God, thank you for the support that we find here and for the peace that we find in prayer with one another. Be with others on our list, God, who are recovering from heart procedures and other operations. For those who are waiting for those procedures, we pray, oh God, for relief from anxiety and for good health to get them through those times. For others who are recovering from cancer or dealing with it at various stages like Lisa and David and Ron and others, we pray, God, for their health and for their peace of mind. We pray for their bodies as they go through this process that can be so harsh. For Lisa, we pray, oh God, for her recovery. God, in your mercy, grant them healing and wholeness. Go with us now, O oh God, as we begin preparing for regathering as a worshiping community of faith and then sorting out what programs we will offer those to which we may return. Our children's ministries, oh God, and the leadership we need for that, for the preparation that we need to do here, inside and out. We pray, oh God, for effectiveness and efficiency as we gather to do that on our days set aside for it. We're not sure what to expect, oh God, when we return on July 4th. We're not sure who will be here and who will still be joining online. We pray for ways to make sure we feel a part of each other, regardless of where it is we choose to join and worship with one another from. So to that process, God, we ask your guidance for clarity and understanding, for patience, and for moving forward. God, we pray you would hear our prayers. We pray you would hear our prayers as we join in worship today for your word, for messaging, for a message from that not only applies but also inspires and moves us forward in a way that maybe we weren't when we came in. Thank you, God, for those who gather to lead our worship and to be present. So as we go now into the remainder of our worship, we pray you would hear our prayers, not only for our community here, but outside these doors and around the world, for people in need, 
to experience what the gospel of Christ has to offer, which is the alleviation of suffering and hunger and bringing wholeness. So here are our prayers for our world and ourselves. Here are our prayers that we offer from our hearts silently. And hear us as we pray together as Christ has taught us. Our Mother, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When the preacher begins with, this may be a two-part sermon. So here goes. This may be a two-part sermon. <laughs> but I'll make a deal with you, okay? I'll make a deal with you. If indeed it becomes a two-part sermon, I'll stop after 15 minutes with the part today and you be back next Sunday and join in for part two, okay? I feel like Monty Hall up here. Let's make a deal. Okay. All right. Great. Well, then let me read our scripture for today, which is about God loving the world, Bill, the earth. Here are these words from John 3, verses 1 through 17. 
That's our part of our scripture today. And the other is, oh yeah, Paul. Now there was a Pharisee, a man named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. And he came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know that you're a teacher who's come from God. For no one could perform the signs you're doing apart from God being with him. And Jesus replied, Surely, truly, I say to you, no one can see the kingdom of God unless they're born from above. How can someone be born when they are old, Nicodemus asked. Surely they cannot enter again into their mother's womb a second time and be born. And Jesus said, truly, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless they're born of water and of spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised by my saying this. You must be born from above. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear the sound, but you can't tell where it comes from or where it's going. So it is with everyone who's born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. Jesus said, you are Israel's teacher and you don't understand these things? Very truly, I tell you, we speak of what we know, we testify what we have seen, but still, you do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak to you of heavenly things? No one has ever gone to heaven except the one who came from heaven, the child of God. Just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so that so must the child of God be lifted up, that everyone who believes may have eternal life in him. For God so loved the world that God gave God's one and only Son, that whoever believes in this one shall not perish but shall have eternal life. God did not send this one into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through this one might be saved. <clears throat> okay. Now, what about Paul? What does Paul have to say? From Romans 8, verses 12 through 17, one of the other, the epistle lectionary scripture for today is from Rome. That was the one for the Gospels, okay? Remember, this is Trinity Sunday. All right, so we're talking about spirit. Jesus talking about spirit. Let's see what Paul's talking about in Romans 8. So then, brothers and sisters, we are debtors not to the flesh, to live according to the flesh. For if you live according to the flesh, you will die. Yeah, big news, flesh will die anyway. But if you live by the Spirit, you put to death the deeds of your body. You will live. For all who are led by the Spirit of God are children of God. For did you not receive a, you did not receive a spirit of slavery to fall back into fear. But you've received a spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. It is that very Spirit bearing witness with our spirit that we are children of God and if children and heirs, heirs of God, joint heirs with Christ, if in fact we suffer with Christ so that we might also be glorified with Him. Okay. Thank you, Paul. Now, what do we do with this? For God so loves the world. Well, when I hear the word world, I normally think in that context, with that passage of scripture, we're talking about human beings. Even though it doesn't say that, it says the world. A number of times, Jesus refers to the world in that passage. So as I reflected on this, I began to think about the birds in my backyard. The cardinals. 
And I gotta tell you that about a month ago, I was sitting on my back porch, as I often do in the mornings, and the trees, the red bud tree, the pecan tree, the maple tree was just flooded with these birds, cardinals, young ones. And they were flying all around, all around. And I did a little research, and what I found out was they were having an orgy right there in the backyard. <laughs> I know it's a word you never thought you would hear said from the pulpit, right? Particularly not about birds, but look, there it is. Okay, they're at least having a speed, a really intense speed dating session, okay? So then this past week, I observed this, this really colorful protector bird over here, while this sort of muted color nurturer bird was picking up twigs one at a time, flying them up into the arbor vitae about 30 feet from our house. And she, she this nurturer bird, was working really hard. And I was tempted to think that this protector bird that was now her mate was, was not working as hard, but this bird had a job, and that was to make sure predators didn't come and disturb what they were building together in this nest. So, it does seem like it's okay for us to talk about the birds and the bees in church. So when I hear this word and I see those birds and I think that God loved the world, the world, I wonder what would it be like to think about, think about it this way, for God so loved the cardinals that God gave God's only child that whosoever believed might be saved and the world, that, that the world would be saved in him. What I loved about those cardinals is they were very much in their bodies. They couldn't exist outside their bodies. They were there. They were present. They were all around, flying all around. And four weeks ago, they were in their bodies. Very much so. Why is it we think God so loved the world doesn't include our bodies? You know, there is a passage of scripture where Jesus talks about birds of the air and God cares for them. God, Jesus talks about the flowers of the earth and how they are arrayed like none other. That God cares for them. And yet somehow we, we begin to read passages such as in Romans and Paul and we think our bodies don't matter anymore that we crucify the flesh. I'll come back to that. Why do we think God loved the world, but it isn't important for us to recognize the value of our own bodies? And I think part of the reason is because Paul. We read a lot of Paul. So let's look at that a little bit. Because I'm confused by Romans 8 when I put it in comparison to John chapter 3 and God loving the world. Because Paul so terribly wants to separate out spirit from flesh. And we've become accustomed to that. We know that there were desert fathers that buried themselves up, in, up to their chin in the sand so that they wouldn't commit any sort of carnal thing with their bodies. I'm not sure how that helped. 
And Paul comes along and says, crucify the flesh, mortify the flesh, mortify the deeds of your mortal body. But that's like all we have in which to walk around on this earth. How can we do that? So I'll give you a little bit of context about Paul is that Paul was speaking as many, in fact all, of the early Christian writers that, whose words we have in our Bible were, and that is with the full expectation that the end was coming. Like the literal end of the world was coming. Fairly soon. Okay, I, I can understand. I can understand how that maybe the body and the earth wouldn't be important in that context. But we're 2,000 years past that now. We can let that go. All right? We may destroy the earth. Humans may go extinct from the earth. But God isn't going to do that. I know. Some people are going to disagree with me on that. Ask me again in 100 years. Maybe I'll change my mind about it. Okay, so Paul was writing from that context, expecting the end to come. Maybe the earth and bodies were not that important. Crucify the flesh. How did that work for Paul? Anybody know? He got a thorn. Where? Inside. In his flesh which he doesn't want to talk about. He doesn't even name. It's left to our imaginations, whatever this sort of mysterious thorn is that he has in his flesh. Was it his stature? Was it something else? You know, it's left to our imaginations. And we have imaginations about that. My guess is that that's a part of the reason why we really don't pay very close attention to what happens in our bodies with, as, as sort of a spiritual experience itself. And that we continue to separate out our flesh or our bodies from our spiritual experience. Paul left it to the imagination. And I'm not sure why. I wish he had just said what it was. I mean, how bad could it have been? I'll come back to that in a second, leaving that to the imagination, but there's another piece that confuses me about this, and that is, that is that there is also a verse that says, know you not that your body is the temple of God. Reason enough for us to pay attention to our bodies as a spiritual place. What does that mean, though? Your body is the temple of God. Well, I suppose, does it mean the place you'd be very quiet? <laughs> I guess it depends on how you worship. But your body as the temple of God is the temple in the sense that where, what happens in the temple where God's presence is God dwells in the temple so what if we began to see our bodies as that place in which God is pleased to, do, to dwell because that is what it is if you're created in the image of God your body is created in the image of God. And in your body, whatever your body is, God is pleased to dwell. So then, what, why is it we still use Paul's messaging about that? I mean, we've got God so loved the world. We've got your body is the temple of God. Why is it we listen to the messaging of Paul about crucify the flesh, mortify the deeds of the flesh? Well, 
The only thing I can think of is Paul had a really good messaging app. He did about the body. And that messaging app was the fundamentalist Christian messaging app that said, oh, the body is this pristine, pure thing that you shall not defile. But on the other hand, crucify it, mortify it. That doesn't make sense to me. That is terribly confusing. Because if the flesh isn't important, then why the fight over what women do with theirs? With their bodies? You see, the body is important. It's very important. It's what we have to walk around in. It's the thing in which our brains are contained. Now, it doesn't contain our spirit or our imagination. That goes out beyond. But it is who we are on this earth as we're here. And it is sacred. And if you don't think it isn't, I mean, if you think it isn't, wait until you fall and break a part of it or until you lose a part of the senses that it gives you and you will recognize just how valuable it is. And if it's valuable, then it also is sacred. Why am I saying all of this on this Trinity Sunday? Because I think, I think we left out a part of God with the doctrine of the Trinity. Creator, the mysterious one. We could have gotten to it with the child in human flesh, but we seldom do because we venerate that with this doctrine. We venerate Jesus to Christ with this doctrine and make him beyond what humans are. And then we have the Spirit, which we see as distinctly separate from the body, and we shouldn't do that because they aren't. <laughs> so I propose a quadrinity. A creator, a Christ, a spirit, and a body in which we walk around with, live and move, and have our being on this earth as we know it with God in it. Satan. So how do we change Paul's messaging about that? It would probably help if we just started paying attention to our own bodies. Because if God so loved the world, we're a part of that. It's not just humans, it's other bodies too. But it also includes our bodies as well. However those bodies present themselves in this world and whatever identity they take, in your body, God is pleased to dwell. I'm going to stop with that. How would I do? Did I stop at 15 minutes? All right. I'll pick up a little bit about this next Sunday then. A little bit about what I've experienced sort of because of and during the pandemic about my own body and some of my habits. All right? I'm in. I invite you to give your offering. So thank you for offerings you've given. Go ahead and go to paypal.me forward slash comic church and you can give your offering. Thank you for those who have given here. Our offerings will now be received.
thank you, God, for these gifts. Thank you for the gifts that you've given to us and the blessings of others that we receive in giving gifts in the ministries here. We ask your blessings on these gifts. May they provide the alleviation of hunger and poverty and suffering in our community and in our world. In the holy name of Christ, we pray. Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. 